Hi guys, welcome to Dad in the Don. Today we're going to be doing an end of season review on Brentford and their amazing first ever Premier League campaign. We're joined by four guests that were unavailable to join us on the live stream. If you missed that, you can catch it here also. The link is in the description. So we've got Dougie, Laura, Ella and Rhys. It's like the Avengers with Brentford shirts. Not quite, but you know what I mean. Anyway, I'm going to hand over to the guys, but please like, subscribe and leave a comment. Thank you, guys. Goal of the season. We've got many contenders for the goal of the season. You just had to watch it when we were voting for it, uh, for Brentford's awards. But for me, anyone who knows me will know already who I'm going to choose here. But for me, there's no doubt about it. Let's take you back to the 13th of August on that Friday night under the lights at Brentford Community Stadium, the first game of the Premier League, our first game of the Premier League. And in the 22nd minute, Sergi Canos scored the opening of our season, of the season, and what a brilliant result that was beating Arsenal 2 0. I love you, Sergi. Right, so my goal of the season, in my opinion, has to be Rico's header against Everton. I was well happy when he scored that. My Brentford goal of the season <clears throat> came in a game which was overshadowed by such a poor performance in the first half by the Bees. Um, it wasn't until the, late in the second half that we got going. I'm talking about Sam and Goddess, acrobatic volley away to Burnley. Uh, Honourable mention also to our second goal against Wolves away, where I think Raya threw the ball or sliced the clearance uh, in his own style, out to Ivan Tony, skipped past the defender, crossed it, and Brian ran in at the far post to score. But I still think Sam and Goddess away to Burnley. So for goal of the season, it's a it's a pretty difficult one because I usually like to pick the nicest goal from a win. Um, except the nice goals that I can think of are Goddess against Burnley, which we lost. Do you know against Southampton? which we lost, and then Tony at home to Wolves, which we lost. Um, and they're all brilliant goals. Um, but obviously we'd lost all of those games. Um, part of me wants to pick the, the Sergi goal against Arsenal at the beginning of the season, purely because it was our first Premier League goal. Um... But then Shandon also got a nice goal away to Leeds, I think. Um, so, ah, uh, I'll go Sergi. I'll go Sergi Canos, first goal of the first goal in our first season in the Premier League against Arsenal at home. Yeah, that's who it is. Team performance of the season. I think many um, Brentford. Fans will choose the 4-1 win over Chelsea because we played brilliant and we shut up the Chelsea fans, which is so good. But for me, I have to go for a game that I, I was actually at and that was the Liverpool thriller. You know, we, we scored first, they equalised, they scored again. We equalised, they scored, and then we scored in the 82nd minute. It was a thriller. And afterwards, for a manager like Klopp to say that our goalie, David Rea, passes like a number 10, that that's comments like that and the way we got the praise after that result, you know, to me, that was... Brilliant performance. Right. My performance of the season has to be Liverpool at home. I was there. We drew 3 all against a team that's won the Champions League six times. 
it's nuts like it's incredible like i can't believe we drew to liverpool but yeah that has to be my performance of the season free all at home against liverpool my performance of the season is probably i think wolves away um honorable mentions again to the obvious standout uh, matches arsenal in the first game of the season the win away at Chelsea, uh, also the win away at Everton. But I, I think Wolves away, really, because it, it was our first away win in the Premier League and it just set us up nicely for a very good run up to towards uh, Christmas. Of course, we did have a dip in form, but it just announced ourselves, I think, that in the division that we weren't going to be taken lightly. It was a good 2-0 win, very comfortable on the day. I think Wolves, from memory, just had one chance quite close to the end when Jimenez uh, headed wide. But uh, other than that, I think um, Brentford largely controlled the game. Not forgetting also West Ham away and any of the other four or five away victories. Performance of the season? I mean... <laughs> The easiest answer has to be away to Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. 4-1. Never looked in doubt. Um, commentators waxing lyrical over everything we've done. Um, and it, I think that was the moment where, you know, we'd already had our moments, you know, beating Arsenal at home. You know, the three-all draw with Liverpool... You know, we've had those games. We had our tough run and obviously Ericsson came in. But that 4-1 was like, a, we're Brentford and we're here to stay. So I'd go with Chelsea 1, Brentford 4. Player of the year. To be honest, there's many contenders for this. You know, you've got Rico, Pinnock, Tony, Brian just to name a few, to be fair, um, obviously Ericsson, but Ericsson's been there with us since January. We were talking about the whole year, and even though he's made a massive difference this season for us, I'm basing this on a full season, and to me, there's no doubt about it, it's Christian Norgard. He's been a rock, can't even... <laughs> I'm that excited, I can't even speak. But, you know, he's always playing at a high level and he's one of the team's leaders. You know, he he scored a few goals, including the one against Arsenal. So, you know, what a season he has had. And he shouldn't be overlooked. His stats say it all. My player of the season has to be Rico Henry. So, to, I think this season he's been top 10, maybe top 5 at a push, best left back this season. He's actually, he's been incredible. And when I've seen him live for the few games I have gone to, he's been absolutely incredible. I am, I'm really proud of him and how he's done this season. And hopefully he does it again next season, to be honest. My player of the season, I think, is uh, Rico Henry. Um, I think he's performed to a very high standard in every single game that he played this season. Um, I know he he didn't win the um, Supporters Player of the Year. That went to Christian Norgard, who, uh, you know, he had a great... I think uh, Rico, for me, um, some good goals as well, particularly the... Uh, the, the third goal, the winning goal away to Everton, just summed up how impressive he has been. And he must be very close to getting a, an England call-up. Now, obviously, Norgard won the official fans and players' player of the season. But I think, for me, it has to be Rico Henry. You know, yeah, he had a couple of bad games. And, you know, he done stupid things that he'll probably look back on and go, why did I do that? But, 
you know, even even in those moments, he's still putting in about a seven and a half, eight out of ten in those games. His tracking back speed is ridiculous. The fact that we can basically leave him on his own at the back, and we know that no matter what happens, we are unlikely to concede. I mean, you can't buy that kind of security, you know. Norgard's brilliant in like the center of the park. He's great on the ball. He's great at snuffing out danger. But I think overall, would I rather a team without Norgard or Henry? I'd probably go with Henry purely for what he can do defensively and with his tracking back. My overall rating of the season, to be honest, it's it's going to be a 10 out of 10. Because what have we got to compare it to in the Premier League? We have outdone ourselves. We've proved a lot of haters wrong. And we've shown up and played brilliant football. If you'd asked me this time last year, well, this time last year, we had won the playoff final. But if you had asked me last year, where would I see ourselves in a year's time? You know, quite honestly, I probably would have said we would be, would have been fighting relegation. But no, we finished 13th. And I am so happy with our year. Right. This season has to be a 10 out of 10. We got promoted, which is one thing. We were the only team out of Watford, us and Norwich that stayed up. We've beaten the likings of Chelsea, who won Club World Cup. We beat them 4-1. We've doubled the likings of West Ham. We had an amazing draw against Liverpool at the start of the season. And we beat Arsenal 2-0, first game of the season. We've been absolutely incredible and to even sign Ericsson, a Tottenham legend, and Adria, who played for Celtics. So, yeah, it's 10 out of 10 from me. Overall thoughts on the season? Well, it's been magnificent, hasn't it? Um, The only way it could have got any better if we'd have qualified for Europe or even won the Premier League, which is uh, highly unlikely in your first season there. Um, marks out of 10, I'd give it probably 8. Uh, it, it did, honestly, ex- exceed my uh, expectations. I thought that we would be down towards the bottom. I, d- I didn't think we would go down, but I, I thought we would struggle throughout the season. That wasn't really the case, apart from uh, two months after Christmas where uh, we lost sort of eight games in a row. Um, since uh, Christian Eriksen came into the team, we totally transformed. Um, and I think uh, Eriksen's performance probably highlights the, the one position where we need to improve if we don't manage to sign him. So, 8 out of 10, Brentford. Next season, well, we're always looking upwards. And I think um, qualification for Europe or featuring heavily in a domestic cup competition would be brilliant. And, you know, obviously we didn't win the Premier League, so that's already minus five. Uh, we can even make it into Europe, so that's another minus. So probably th- three out of ten. Oh, wait, sorry. No, that's what Man United are going to be doing. Um, if you said to me at the beginning of the season, Brentford Football Club would never touch the bottom three, would have secured safety before the final game of the season... And would finish, I think it was 13th in the end. I'd have laughed at your face. I'd have taken it. I wouldn't have wouldn't have thought any harder about it. I'd be like, yep, yeah, sure, I'll have it. Do what you want. And it's been a fantastic season. It's had its highs, it's had its lows. But overall, there's there's not more I could have asked for them. They put it out there on the line every game. Even in those woeful defeats, they still put it out there. So, I think there's never such a thing as a perfect season. So, I'd probably go with an 8. I'd honestly go with an 8 because, like I say, there's no such thing as a perfect season. You've always got to strive to be better. So, 
And even even if we finish in sixth next season, I'm still giving us an eight. So, but yeah, 